Welcome to this episode number 79 of Your Next Trade called Today Never Short a Dull Market. So last week, unfortunately, I was unable to do uh, the video because I was in Paris for personal reason, but the market, equity market stocks uh, kept on going higher and higher. So let's start with what we have looking at the S&P 500, looking at the futures. And as we can see over the last six months, we went from 5,000 to now 5,900. So market is up more than 15% over the last six months. And what we can see from these charts is actually most of the volumes, and you can do the same on the ETF of the S&P 500 with the SPY, you will see that the volumes have been coming lower and lower. So if we look at the bottom of this chart, as we can see, we got the volumes and we got the 20 days moving average. And most of the times, those volumes will be below this average. The reason is pretty obvious. The market is grinding higher in low volume uh, with not that much participation at the end. And uh, we, as we saw as well, if you look at the options market, most of the positioning will be for hedging on the left hand side, meaning uh, market participants will be uh, hedging uh, and, and, and buying many, many puts and thinking the markets will be going lower. And in the meantime, the positioning for the right hand side with the calls have been very low and the market is grinding higher and higher. So the volumes, you know, only are picking up when the market is tanking. So this is what we had at the end of July, start of August. But otherwise, you know, volumes have been coming down. It's pretty obvious that over the last two weeks or so, volumes really um, down and down. So uh, strongly advise you to look at the S&P, but going forward, what do we have? We got the elections that are coming, and this is something that we're going to be discussing today in terms of positioning and in terms of what has been doing well in the overall market. So looking now at the year to data set performances, we do have like the twins. We have the S&P and the NASDAQ that are up 23% on the year and really what is pretty clear, those big indexes, US indexes, are outperforming the, uh, the, the rest of the world. So uh, it has been about, you know, those big stocks, those big indexes really doing well. Uh, we are up more than 40% over the last 12 months. So a big, big move. Um, if we look now at the dollar, dollar strong on the year, uh, Bitcoin strong, but I'm more interested into the week to data set performance. So, so it's more or less like you feel like every single week, the equity market is up between 50 bips and 1%. Um, and that gives you a performance for the year around 25% if you take, you know, 50 bips. Um, so it's uh, it's almost like a bond for the week here. We are up 0.9% uh, for the S&P. Everything has been up mostly, you know, if you take uh, into account and, and, and Europe, which is a bit of a struggle, and Japan with the currency and a strong dollar as well. And finally, Bitcoin. Uh, crypto is very, very strong. The reason is pretty obvious. The market is more and more um, going for Trump winning those elections, meaning uh, Bitcoin cryptos have been doing pretty well. WTI down 9% on the week. Uh, so you can you can have as many noise as possible coming from the Middle East. The reason is pretty obvious as we underline over and over. There is a lot of supply coming and the market so far is well balanced. Um, so we will be doing a, a a video later, uh, probably in the next couple of months, about you know su uh, supply and demand for the WTI market for for the oil market. Um, so year to date industry performance, I would like to jump more into the the week to date and and looking at what has been underperforming. So oil services because oil was down, but interestingly as well, solar down uh, more uh, more than five percent on the week because the market, as I said is more and more pricing uh, Trump winning. Um, so if you look at 2016, that was probably the other way around um, when um, uh, uh, Trump won. Uh, so for this time, a lot of pricing, uh, looking at, at, at the sectors that have been doing well, the industries that have been doing and uh, outperforming, uh, that has been the Trump winning. And there are uh, indexes, like I think this is the JP Morgan uh, uh, Democrats versus the Republicans. And um, over the last couple of months, 
the JP Morgan Democracy Index has been really underperforming. So this is what the market is pricing for the time being the S&P. So this is here. So up roughly 1%, but as you can see, you know, you get as many winners as losers uh, almost. So there is a bit of uh, broadening of the equity market with the sector performance, you know, energy for the week down 3%, as we said. Uh, no surprise here when uh, WTI is done that much. And overall, as we can see, anything that has been uh, rates actually has been doing pretty well uh, and financials as well uh, doing very, very well. The reason is uh, that was 10 days ago with JP Morgan who started uh, the earning season, outperformed it very well on the day, 5 to 6%, followed by Goldman Sachs, which actually on the day uh, finished flat. But overall, uh, financials beat the expectations. The reason is pretty obvious when the US economy is doing well, financials are doing well. So uh, banks are the second derivative of the uh, GDP, of how the U.S. economy is doing. And as long as the U.S. economy is doing fine, uh, those financials are doing pretty, pretty well. Um, and if we look more recently in terms of macro, there has been a a restarting of the economy. Um, so that means the, the odds of a uh, recession have been probably lower to 5 to 10 percent. Now we are talking 3 percent GDP growth expectation for uh, for this quarter. So that's a big number. Economy is doing very well. And in the meantime, as this economy is doing uh, better than what was expected a couple of months ago. Uh, we get rates, um, yields that have been going higher. So bonds have been sold, uh, yields going higher, and now we get the 10 years at 4% plus. Um, I think it will become an issue for the equity market when, if we go around the 420 and above. Uh, as long as we stay in the 4%, that means the economy is doing well. That uh, may be going forward as we see with the Fed fund rates that what are the Fed fund rates? This is the pricing of how uh, the Fed um, will be doing in the future, cutting or not cutting rates. So for the time being, the effective Fed fund rate is at 483. Uh, and we get two FOMC meetings, so two Fed meetings until the end of the year. Not so long ago, the market was expecting a cut of 25 bips in November and another cut in December. Right now, if you look at December, we are expecting versus the last 32 bips. So that means market is more and more going into one cut, uh, maybe one cut and a half uh, before the end of the year. Why? Because as I said, the market, the, the macro, sorry, the macro numbers, the uh, most of the indicators and most importantly, the retail sales, as we're going to be discussing, have been pretty good. And that means the Fed doesn't have to be as aggressive in terms of cutting rates that the market was expecting even six weeks ago. If you look at uh, the change uh, from from the last uh, three weeks uh, since the end of September, it is a red line. We went up. So in other words, we are expecting Fed to be more hawkish and cutting a bit less um, uh, rates. What about the VIX? What about volatility? So you have a bit of a misleading indicator here, which is the VIX. Why the VIX is taking options um, in the next, let's say, 25 to 37 days, I think. So in other words, if you look at what we have here, which is, you know, the 20th of uh, October, um, in the next couple of weeks or three weeks, we're going to have the elections, the US elections. And um, a lot of market participants will be hedging their positions, uh, taking a lot of insurance over the uh, over these elections. And that obviously distort uh, the pricing of uh, uh, insurance. So in other words, you get a VIX that is at 19%, where in the meantime, unfortunately here, this is uh, not updating, but you will see that this is for your nine days, that volatility as uh, into uh, the short dated volatility, nine days here, is, is going into low numbers. Um, that's the same with the realized, if you look at the realized volatility, 10 days, 20 days for the S&P, we are taking very low numbers. So. Why? Because it comes back to the idea that uh, you don't short a dull market and as well that the economy is doing very well. So as long as the economy is doing well, and as we're going to see as well, as the earnings have been pretty good so far for the uh, for the US, uh, overall the market is, is, is going higher. But interestingly for you as a trader, what you see versus 2016 is the expectations now for Trump to be winning 
volatility is pretty low um, and everyone is expecting the market to go to, to 6,000 to the S&P. So let's look at why the market is pricing that for the uh, for the S&P and I want to start with the um, with the chart of the S&P and you're going to see uh, from your own eyes that really this is the path that we are discussing. So market is at 58.64 for the S&P uh, but if you look at the trend so let's do a bit of dodgy technical analysis. So if you do the trend here um, the trend that we have more recently that you, you, you see the top the top where do you end up at the start of November, around the 5th of November? Guess what? You end up at 6,000. So good chance we're going to go there and then <laughs> we have to reset uh, because, you know, Trump, is it that good in terms of, of market? Is it that good of the debt to GDP? Well, you, you make a decision. I don't want to be telling, I don't want to tell you to be Democrat or Republicans. This is not for me to say, but what is important is, you know, what the market is pricing, what has been the trend and the chart is telling you, you know, you're going to 6,000 around this time and then you reset. You are the top of the, of this, um, of this trend. So I will be cautious going into the next three to four weeks. Um, if we look now at the Russell, I'm going to skip the NASDAQ, um, and going towards the, the Russell. So the Russell is testing recent highs and, and you know, um, that tells you about the broadening of the uh, US market. We are around 2300. WTI with the CL1 at 69. Uh, as I've been saying over and over, there is a good support around the 67. We have been bouncing around this 67 level, but the trend is, as you can see, uh, is, is lower so far. So as long as we don't have a huge issue on the supply demand that has been the trend. The big winner of the week, and especially on, on Friday, uh, silver uh, has been really, really strong. There has been tons of calls uh, that were traded on Friday. And that tells you that uh, the market is not so... Uh, um, okay, actually, with this low volatility, with everyone telling you, you know, it's fine. And we are doing going for real assets and we are going for real assets like uh, silver and like gold as well. Why? Because there is chance as well that inflation is still in the system and with uh, the um, uh, central banks and actually the fiscal stimulus that is very much true all over the world we are talking most countries are running five to seven percent uh, deficit that means you know many uh, um, participants are going for real assets like gold and and silver your dollar uh, with a strong dollar recently um that is another trump trade where you know seen as having a strong dollar that's going to be a, a tough one because last time, if you remember, in 2016, Trump was really keen on weakening the U.S. dollar to make sure that the exports will be good. So, um, so far, we have been trading in this uh, 104, uh, so 104, 113, uh, and we have been trading there over almost for two years. Um, I want to be looking as well at Europe with the stock 600 because, you know, uh, you, you're allowed to be trading other markets. Um, and we have been really uh, close to this uh, uh, um, uh, top of the range, uh, which is around the 530, 525 and, and banging and banging. Um, I could see looking at the DAX where on the one hand, you do have like very bad macro numbers coming from, from the DAX. But in the meantime, the market is trading higher. The reason is when you look at indexes, make sure that you understand what is inside those indexes. Okay, if you look at the the DAX 30, which is for Germany, uh, you will see that you have SAP, that you get the Munich Ray, so you had a lot of insurers that have been doing well. You got as well, as I said, SAP, which is a play for AI, and all those stocks are making new eyes. So. I'm looking for uh, to be shorting the DAX uh, 2% from here. I think it's going to be coming soon. And if you look at timing, it's probably going to be the same as the start of, of November uh, when uh, we get the S&P uh, around 6,000. Finally, uh, as always, uh, this is the earnings season. So on Tuesday, we're going to have G. Uh, G, you know, if you look at this chart, we went from 50 to almost 200. Uh, huge move. Expectations um, have been pretty strong. They delivered the number. So I didn't put here the uh, uh, the top line and the bottom line for G, but uh, there has been as well a spin-off 
uh, of, of of G. Um, so this is the some of the names that I'm lo be looking for the, for the week. So after the financials, uh, most of the names that will be uh, coming with their numbers this week are going to be industrials. For the week after is going to be the fabulous seven. So this week, uh, why looking at industrials? Because that's a good way to understand how the economy in the US could be uh, in 2025. So let's go back into, if I manage to do it, uh, to the um, to what happened for the week. So this is for the S&P, um, starting with the futures, where we have been trading between 58.50 and, and, and 59.20, roughly. But uh, as I said before, we are going up almost 50 bips every single week. If we look at the macro retail sales that came out this week were better than expected. So the US... Um, and the U.S. consumer is still doing very well, um, and that is important because we are going, uh, we are coming into the um, most important uh, season for the for the retailers, uh, looking into Christmas, looking at Thanksgiving. So uh, from mid-November onwards, we are talking at very important time. And so far, U.S. consumer is is doing well. We had some some issues last six months ago of um, for the U.S. consumer for everyone that is probably between thirty and $60,000 uh, um, earnings, but overall doing pretty well. I want to talk as well about earnings. So earnings, um, and we are talking here with TSM, uh, which is uh, semiconductors and how TSM, uh, which is listed in the uh, US uh, and as well in, Tha in Thailand, in Taiwan. Um, and as you can see here, this is the chart here of um, TSM versus the SOX, which is the semiconductor index, there has been a divergence. Why? Because TSM has been saying, you know, artificial intelligence is doing very, very well, uh, and we're going to have a great year in 2025. If you listen to ASML, which came with a profit warning, they said, actually, you know, AI is doing very, very well. We are still very confident. And anything that is not AI has been struggling. So they lowered the numbers. But overall, you know, the, the play of artificial intelligence over the last 18 months, there is a good chance that it will carry on when, you know, the big leader uh, like TSM is telling you it's going to be fine. And ASML as well is doing uh, well. So earnings, retail sales, TSM for this week and some others. But I'm looking into the catalyst. So we got a lot of earnings coming. And as I said, you know, if you look at Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we had tons of industrials, uh, cyclicals companies that are coming, especially on, on Tuesday. Uh, we do have like a bit of macro as always. We get more importantly, the flash PMIs. On uh, Thursday, we get the Bank of Canada red decision where the expectation, I think, are 50 bips cut on, on, on Wednesday. And we have some of the leading indicators with the Philadelphia, Richmond and some others. But overall, this is mostly about the earnings season. So how the market has been behaving and how the, uh, how the companies have been doing so far, uh, both in the U.S. And, and, and Europe. So in the U.S., uh, actually, I think the numbers for uh, the earnings companies have been beating by more than 80%. So we are above average. Uh, so that will be this chart here. Uh, if you look at the sales, we have a bit of a beat, but earnings um, have been uh, better than expected, uh, better than the average. And more importantly, and this is something that I want to be looking because we discussed a bit on the on the community on Discord, you know, how um, looking at the at the money straddle for net Netflix. And we opened on, on Friday, bang at the at the money straddle, and, and someone didn't understand that I was talking about the market makers making money and not, you know, people that were longer or short uh, the, the straddle. But what I want to say is, you know, so far uh, over the last 10 days uh, in the U.S., stocks that have been uh, beating the, uh, the numbers have been outperforming and doing very well on the day. So this chart is from Barclays and that is pretty helpful. As you can see, this uh, light blue for the S&P 500, when you beating the numbers, we do, the stock will be doing much better than usual. And in the, 
And actually, if you look vice versa, uh, with the dark blue uh, looking at Europe, when the stock is missing in Europe, the stock will be absolutely destroyed. And you can be looking on for Europe at ASML, you can be looking at uh, LVMH, and on the end of the spectrum, you can be looking at the US as JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, uh, you can be uh, Netflix. So, so far, you know, what is the price, what is, has been the reaction? If you do better in the US, you're going to be exploding your, uh, 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 your uh, straddle on the way up. Uh, and that will be the other way around for, 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 for Europe. But so far, again, the earnings season in the US has been pretty, pretty good. Um, why? We lowered the expectations just before, uh, something we discussed a couple of weeks ago. We lowered the expectations, but uh, uh, still, this is, this is pretty good. Uh, for the financials and, and some others. So finally, looking at why we should not be uh, selling a dull market, as long as there is not something, you know, uh, uh, an outsider coming, um, looking at the implied volatility, you remember VIX is at 20, so you will think, oh, this is, um, the market should be moving and it's very, uh, moving a lot. But actually looking at the SPY weekly straddle, we are talking less than a percent, a percent move expected for the week. So this is more or less, you know, the 50, 50 bips, 1% move up that we expect every single week. So that is it for, for this week. As always, if you are interested in but what we do as education, you can join us on the trading community on Discord. We have a free channel and we get 20 uh, channels that you can uh, have access to if you subscribe to the 4x4 video series and or the mentoring. If you are um, interested in the, in the video series, obviously you can send me an email. Same with the mentoring. As I said, um, it's going to be close uh, soon for uh, for Q1. So if you got interest, uh, you should hurry. Otherwise, you know, a lot of earnings coming for this week, uh, elections coming in uh, two to three weeks. Um, and that should hopefully give us a bit of volatility going forward. This is it for me for the week. Have a good trading week. Bye bye.